woman. We're talking about a mother's love. You know, I thought about what to share this afternoon. It, um, my mind went into a lot of places. And to come up with a thesis to charge her mother this evening, I thought about the fact that Jesus is a person who liked to teach by using object lessons. When he walked this earth, he taught in parables to say the kingdom of heaven is like a sower who went for to sow or like a sower who planted good seed in his field. And it came to my mind that on this earth, I believe that a mother's love is God's most powerful illustration. A preachers would understand what I'm talking about. A mother's love is God's most powerful object lesson. Let me bring it home again. A mother's love is God's most powerful parable. And it is his gift to humanity. That's what I believe. Indeed, a powerful gift. And to prove that, I want to share with you that God likens his love for his people to a mother's love. And there are several um, evidences for that. For example, God was willing to trust the Son of God into the hands of a young mother because he knew that he had gifted and he had created and he had invested all the qualities that are necessary to represent him into the heart of a mother. And so he was willing to trust, indeed, the Son of God into the hands of a young mother. The second reason why I believe that a mother's love is so powerful and represents God is that in Exodus chapter 20, in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, the Bible tells us in Exodus 20 and verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. What this says to me is that, that God is saying to children, the love of a mother represents me on this earth. The authority of a mother, the responsibility of a mother, represents God upon this earth. And you can imagine, brothers and sisters, that there are several places in the Bible that God illustrates his love and uses it as an object lesson, as I, as I mentioned. One of them is found in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 14 to 15. Where the Bible says, but Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me and my Lord hath forgotten me. And then God asked the question, can a woman forget her sucking child? You know, we often present this passage of scripture to, to marvel at the idea of a woman forsaking her child. But the truth is, I marvel at the idea that God could find no other object on earth. He could find no other illustration on earth to point out the love he has for his people outside of the love of a woman. Can a woman forget her sucking child? It seems impossible. Can you see, as I said before, God knows the type of material that a mother's love is made of. And therefore, if a mother forsakes her sucking child, it is something phenomenal. It is something out of the ordinary. It is something to really um, wonder about. And so he says, yes, she may, but I will not forget thee. In other words, a mother's love was supposed to be representing me, but if, if, if it fails, I will not fail. And there are three things that I thought about it. There are three qualities of a mother's love that represents God that I'll be touching on. I, I, I'm sorry I couldn't list more than three, but I felt because of the shortness of the time, I have to stick to three of them. Number one, 
three qualities um, of a mother that makes a mother's love representing God's love. Number one is that a mother's love, and if you agree with me, please post in the chat. And if you have other um, object lessons, if you, if you have other um, metaphors that can be used to represent a mother's love, please post it as well. The first one is that a mother's love is unconditional. A mother's love is unconditional, and so is God's love. You see, God knew that this world could become a lonely place. He knew that this world could become very competitive, as one person would say, a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And so by default, by default, he made certain that every single one of us who comes into this world is coming into the world having a mother's love. We come into this world belonging to someone like God. We come into this world with someone who will accept us despite our mistakes. We come into this world having someone who will not count us by our failures, but will count us and value us by our dignity. Someone to whom we belong and always belong. When no one else sees potential in you, a mother sees value. You know, as I wrote this message, I, I thought about it, that I remember my brother, there are six of us as children, two, two boys, uh, sorry, four boys, two girls. And I am the third, I am the second son. And the, the, my brother who follows me immediately, well, just a, just a year apart, I can remember as a child that he was very sickly. And my mother would have to be at the hospital very regularly because of him. And I remember my mother carrying him on, on, on her back. And someone, while she was passing, was saying something of the effect to say, why don't just throw him away? You know, why, in other words, why bother? Why go through all this trouble when you can relieve yourself of that trouble? Just throw him away. No matter what police would lock you up if you throw him away. And I, and I saw my mother, despite her challenges, she held on to her son because her son belonged to her. He's her son. And she's going to stick with him just the same. That is the type of love that God has for us. It is unconditional and totally accepting. And I run along quickly. This, the second one is that a mother's love is protective of her children. A mother's love is protective of her children, and God used it to represent his love for us. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 11, the Bible says, as an eagle stirred up her nest, flutter it over her young, spread it abroad her wings, take at them, bear at them under her wings. That's how God's love protect us and watch over us. And then in Matthew chapter, sorry, Psalm chapter 91, um, God says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And in St. Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 to 39, Jesus said to, the, to the, the, the Jews, how often would I have gathered you as a hen gathered her chick, but you would not allow me. And, and truly, I can testify, that is how a mother protects her children. You know, I, I have this thing that I always say that I believe, and, and mothers can agree or disagree with me, I'm posting in the chat. I believe that mothers don't sleep. I, I, I have this tendency. I grew up with my mother. I know I have my wife. And I think that mothers don't fall asleep. Because my mother, there were four of us as boys. And when we get to teenage years, we would stay out late at night. And no matter what time of the morning we come in, my mother was always ready to open the door, always ready to hear what's happening. She's always up. Once her children are on the outside, she's not going to sleep. And I remember one, one evening 
with my wife experience um the the, the my our son um or one year old son was um something beside her and she fell asleep obviously and i just came and touched him and she was like <laughs> grabbing i'm like that is true mothers do not sleep they are always protective of their children she does not allow anyone to take advantage of her children my mother was very poor but we would not feel that we would not she would not allow us to feel the brunt of it we all knew as children growing up that the pressure was so much on her that the truth is if she ran off and leave us I mean, later on, it would affect us in life, but we would understand. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. If she ran away and leave us, we would understand because we understood the pressure that she was under. But a mother's love would not cause her to leave. We, we were poor, but she not, did not allow us to grow up as beggars. A mother is willing to do what it takes. She's willing to work um, what they call it, low-paying jobs, just so her children can eat, just so they can, um, can make it through in life. God would have it that my mother had a privilege. She died a very early death, but she, she saw her last child graduating from university. And it was that same year that she died, providentially. And indeed, God is very merciful. The other thing about a mother's love, the final one I want to mention is that a mother's love is full of kindness. And I got the word when I was listening to the program this evening, self-sacrificial. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10 and 15 tells us, who can find a virtuous woman? For, the, for her price is far above rubies. She rises also while it is yet night and give it me to her household and a portion to her maidens. One of the images that will never be erased from my mind was that I said we grew up poor in, in Vaughansfield, St. James, in Maroonton, St. James, sorry. Vaughansfield is, is our church. And I remember one morning I got up very early for some reason. At that time I got up. Maybe it was about three, four o'clock in the morning. And what I saw was my mother on her knees praying to God. And that touched me because I realized that what she was going through, what she was facing, she never wanted her children to face the full brunt of it, but she was holding on to God. She had a connection with God and she was depending on God to carry us through. A mother's love is self-sacrificing. She will go all out to spare her children. And another illustration of that is that I always um, wonder that when my mother is having her dinner, she always left an extra dumpling in her, in her plate because she knew that as soon as we finish our dinner, we're going to mother, we're going to mama to get um, a piece of food and she always has something. That illustrates the self-sacrificing love of a mother. A mother's love is truly a powerful instrument in the hands of God. But the truth is that it is to be noted that a mother's love is only an instrument in the hand of God. Before I wrap this up, I must let you know that a mother's love is like a scaffold that prepares the child for the love of God. A mother's love by itself is not so is not sufficient. It is not self-sufficient without God's love. So there are, there are countless stories in the Bible that illustrate, because I have to wrap this up now, where, where a mother's love is supposed to appear the child that when they come of age and can make decisions, they can fall in love with Jesus because they would have gotten so much of the love of God in their lives. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, that that has been my experience. Because everything, every time I think about my mother, the next person I think about is Jesus. When I think about her protection, when I think about her love and her kindness and her unconditional acceptance, the next person I think about 
it's Jesus. That was the experience of Anna in the Bible when she says in when she says in sorry in 1 Samuel 1 verse 18 that she is going to lend Samuel to the Lord all the days of his life because she recognized that though she loved her son her love is not complete without the love of God. And I remember my own mother when I lost my job as, a, as I was a known adult, I graduated from school and got my first job and, and I, I was fired from my job. And I went to her home to stay for a little while. I saw my mother anxious, wanting to do something, but, but she couldn't do anything. She had to allow me to face this challenge on my own. She had to depend on the upbringing that she had already invested in me. And praise God, her investment had paid off. I was able to pull up my bootstrap and by the grace of God, to move forward in life. Just before I close, I must give a warning that uh, though a mother's love is a powerful tool in the hands of God, it is very dangerous when it is superseded, when it supersedes the love of God. And there are two, two examples in the Bible that I want to cite. And that is the example of Herodias in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 6 to 8, where Herodias could have gotten her daughter to request the head of John the Baptist. What I see, dear brothers and sisters, is that this mother took advantage of the trust that a child places in her. Many mothers are doing that today. We, are, we, we take advantage of the trust and the submission that, they, that they, the, the child put in us that really belongs to God, and we abuse it, and we create out of our children little idols. We, we create little images of ourselves rather than placing in their minds and heart a love for Jesus. Because in the end, our purpose is to lead them to, the, to know the love of God. Another example I could cite, is Rebecca and Jacob, or even the mother of James and John. Even though they were not as bad as Herodias, but you can see that especially James and John's mother, they, they said to Jesus, put my son on the right and on the left. In other words, she wanted ambitions, not just for them, but for herself, to be able to go and tell the neighbors, you see my two sons, they are the highest in God's kingdom. But my brothers and sisters, the point still remains that a mother's love is the most powerful illustration, the po most powerful and potent object lesson for the love of God. And so mothers, truly the hands that rock the cradle rule the world. May God help mothers. And I know some of you are, I know I heard the testimonies to truly continue to reflect God's love to your children, that indeed when they come out of that incubator, they will have the love, they will be singing and, and, and be so in tune with God's love that it will be easy for them to respond. May God bless our mothers as we pray a very special prayer for them at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you for mothers that you have blessed us with. Full of kindness, full of compassion, full of love for your children. We pray, Lord, for a special anointing of your Holy Spirit upon every mother who is watching, who is online at this time, that you might bless them and grant them, O oh Lord, more love, more of the love of God. Give them the patience, Lord, that even when they see that their investment might be going astray and might be wasted, they will still not become discouraged. Encourage, O oh Lord, those who feel that their children are wayward and help them to continue to pray and to lodge your prayers in heaven on behalf of these children. Bless the mothers again, Lord, as we consecrate them to you because their work is just as important as the president and prime minister. Their work is just as important as the pastor and the leaders of the church. Their work, O oh Lord, is just as important and even more important than the king on his throne. Bless them, Lord, and grant them success 
that we might be, have a better world today and better children because of your grace and your love towards the mothers. We pray and say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.